hi and welcome to life calculator development C sharp let me show you guys how this works I'm going to reset the robot so just click on reset to get rid of this there and in here I'm going to enter a name there let's say the name is John John Peters, John Peterson, and the date of birth of John Peterson. Let's grab the date of birth. Let's say is yeah, nineteen ninety five, and the month happens to be that. All we need to do is to compare that birth month to the present month. Click on result. There we go. And data details of John Peterson is added to our database right there. We can add more data if we want. Let's add maybe David. David Henry. Okay, let's say David Frogman. There. And right there below, we're going to add in the details of David. Frogna, let's change the date of birth of Frogna to 1997. Now we can change the month to maybe November and that. Click on that. There we go. That's details of David Frogna there. We can exit if we want. I'm not going to exit yet. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you guys straight into C sharp development environment. I will put one of these together. Let's do that now, guys. Okay, let's start a new project, guys. I'm going to click on create right there. All right. Create new project actually brings you to this dialog box area. If you don't have your C sharp here, all you need to do is to click on this drop down arrow and select C sharp there, right there. Then you can then search for the template you intend to use here. Or you can just type in the name of this template there. The template I'm using is Windows Forms application, and this is Windows uh, Visual Studio 2019. So I'm going to make sure I select that and click on Next. There. And let's give my project a name. I'm going to call it CS underscore live. There we go. I'm going to click on create there and right there guys my development environment is ready the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this project there the project property there if you don't have your property all you need to do is go back to windows and you select reset window layout okay just click on that and then you click on yes the window layout will be reset okay there so select this property and let's scroll right down but in the first place make sure you have this alphabet a to z okay that will help you a great deal so i'm going to scroll right down and look for size that that's the size there the first number we have in there that's the width so i'm going to change the width to 1386 there we go if i press enter you see that's extended so if i change this that is the length i'm going to change and the height i'm going to change the height to 788 there we go that extend the height as well there now i'm going to collapse everything here and the next thing i want to do is i'm going to come to my toolbox right here click on the toolbox and let's select the plan right there there the panel bring that down here and I'm going to change the properties of that to let's come right here change it to the border change it to fix 3d right there and let's copy it across grab hold on to your control copy one there there and I'm going to bring that up here somewhere and I also copy this one that would be for the buffets and that 
that's all there is to it. Don't do right here. And drag the button now much. And this little one just bring it there. Okay. And right here, I'm gonna add a text box and a label. So label. Let's add a label here that'll be for my title and another let's add a text box now one text box here i'm going to need two text boxes here one and two and grab a label for the title one two three i need about 11 of those for titles just select it all copy and paste hold on to your control click and drag so we have about nine there we don't need more of those anyway. One and two. So we arrange it. We arrange it all later on. Now here I need the time picker right here. So come back to my toolbox and let's look for the component known as date time picker right there. Click and just draw right there. We need two of those. There we go. Hold on to the control copy. Now underneath here, I'm gonna need a label. Need all of these with the labels to add to it. And uh, I'm gonna have to convert this to label. So let's come right here and go to auto size. Auto size. Look at it right there. Make sure that it's false. And the back color. I'm gonna change the back color to something light. And maybe white if you guys want. Then the border style, I'm going to change it to fixed 3D. Then scroll right down. Let's get rid of the text content we have in there. Delete there and just drag it. See, it looks like a text box. So I'm going to click and just copy it across. I have two now. Okay. we have about eight there in total I just need about 11 anyway I'm gonna get rid of this so there so let's select every single one of these components uh, including the label and I'm gonna change the size of that it's coming straight to the properties let's make that 16 right there 16 bold okay that's fine and let's change the data we have in here to first name so that will become a first name and the next one this will become txt first name let's pin this down come right here change that to txt first name and the next one is going to be the txt surname let's change that to surname okay why this one will be surname the text will be surname for that there let's correct that okay this will be date of birth Just gonna leave this one as the time picker one. This one will be the time picker two, and I come in here. This will be current date. And so on, guys. I'm gonna have to speed that up and get back to you guys. All right, there, guys. So you see this little bit there. I'm gonna make that my title. Come right there and just enter as follows. There we go. And let's increase the font size of that to something readable. I'm going to make that maybe about 48. There we go, guys. 40. Let's make it 48 bold. Bold. There. Okay.
okay so it's looking good that's fine now you see here i'm going to enter data gravy let's go to the source and look for the toolbox actually let's look for data gravy right there this very one click drag and just draw it here come right down here and just there we go and bring it down That's fine. Okay, my data preview is there. I'm right here with our three buttons. So let's come down here. One button. Increase the sign of that. Two button. And three. And let's select them all. Increase the font size of this button. Maybe make that bold 18. Yeah, that's fine. And change the text content. This is going to be known as BTN result. And the text con that's the name of it. The text content on it is going to be BTN result. This is going to be reset. And the name is going to be reset. BTN reset. Okay. And this last one change the name to btn exit and the name is just going to be exit there we go that is it there all right when we come up here now let's run it and see how the whole inter interface looks like so save it and just run click on start okay right there guys that's how it's looking so what i'm going to do now is to add some title to this data Review. So let's end that and select the data preview. Or maybe let's select the form first. Come straight to the properties of the form. You see where we have start position. I'm going to make that dead center. There we go. That's fine. Now select this. Scroll up. You see where, where we have this rectangle? Click on that and let's click on edit columns. Click on columns and I'm now going to click on first item I intend to add will be the heading type I'm going to leave the column number as just column one so change that to first name okay add the next one column two that will be surname column three I'm going to call that date of birth but that will be one word else the system will not accept that date underscore of underscore birth that's for this then current date come right down here just change that to current date underscore date add and after I'm going to click on the next one I think the next one is this yeah click on add there I'll close that and say okay so that I can see everything I want to do in there so let's come in here and drag this I need to be able to enter the correct details all right first of all let's drag that that much so that I can pick on it all right and edit click on edit so i have up to no that should have actually been today number of days okay days so let's go back in here and click on add the next one here is going to be age and followed by months then we have weeks add weeks we have hours hours lived and else we have minutes then finally we have seconds there as you can see I have 11 columns in total 
click on that and we can close okay the choice is yours if you want to carry out something like edit and so on you can just select get it edited look at this date and look at this current they are not in the position where i expect them to be so we can always just click on them and then move them up age should be up here the next one is and as you can see the column the details of age let's see it should be column two this is column one and this should be column number two so column number three is this let's move it up column number four move that out as well and column five there okay the choice is yours if you want to just rename like column number five let me let me look for the lead the header title i'm just gonna say number of days there number underscore of underscore days click on ok there we go that's it so let's expand it and let's continue with our with the rest of the coding now so we need to add some lines of code in there first of all let me just double click on which on uh, exit and take care of that okay right here inside the procedural area of exit the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to use try cache just in case if there's any error just for it to take care of that so enter coil bridges and right underneath okay you can see the coil bridges as it's open and another one closing there so right underneath i'm going to enter cache whatever error that might happen okay that will be exception i'm going to call this exception ex come out of there press enter and enter another coil bridges in there now let me take care of my delete lines of code first or exit lines of code first I'm going to declare this variable that is called dialog result. That is it right there. Double click on dialog result. Dialog result equals I exit. There we go. Enter semicolon. Press enter. Then I'm going to now enter as follows that I exit inherited the following lines of code, which is a message box. Message box dot show. Um, what do I want you to show? I want you to just ask the user to confirm if they want to exit or not. So that's all. That's the first argument. The second argument is going to be let's enter a comma. That will be my title. I'll just call it Life Calculator. Let's enter a semicolon here to get rid of that error that is showing. Now, the next argument is going to be the message box icon. Enter a comma. I'm going to say message box. Message box button. That's it right there. Double click on it. I'm going to make that dot yes or no. And the fourth argument, because this method actually takes in four arguments it's going to be message box icon and this message box icon is going to be dot question there that is it all of that is ready the next thing i'm going to now do is i want to use an if statement to check what is enter in i exit i exit equals equals dialog results then we just need to say dot yes so if it's yes you exit out of the system so we'll come down here and just press enter open up a coil of braces and inside the coil of braces you just need to enter the function application dot exit which means because you've selected yes the application will officially exit enter parenthesis and there we go that is it those are the lines of code for you from here down here the lines of code for exits 
inside try cache and I will cache whatever error that I might run into. Well, I'm going to take a shortcut now. I'm going to copy this message box and come right inside the cache. I'm just going to enter message box show, but I'll get rid of all of these. Get rid of this, just this very one. I'm gonna call that ex dot message. There, that's the message that will be displayed automatically. I'm come right down here. So that will also generate yes or no. So as a result, I'm gonna get rid of the yes or no method and just enter okay. There. So that takes care of that off exit now let's go back in here let's double click on reset double click on reset and right inside reset guess what i'm going to use try cache as well might as well copy all of this and come right in here paste that there and i'm going to get rid of all of this i don't need them so to clear the system I'm just going to say lblh dot text equals clear that's for the very first one so i have in total 11 some are text box txe first name there txe surname okay paste then i have lbl this paste lbl hours paste lbl minutes there lbl months paste lbl seconds and lbl weeks so those are the textbooks that i have on my the labels that I have on my system right here, there they are. So what I'm doing is I'm actually clearing them all up. There, there, there they are. Okay. And the next one is, I need. We also need to reset this. So I'm going to copy that and double click on that. And I'll paste that. Let's paste it right underneath here. Paste. And in the case of the the time picker that is just going to be dot reset dot reset text and enter parentheses in there okay officially it will just default back to current date come back down copy paste one is called date time picker one and date time picker two so if you guys Take a good look at that. That is, or those are the lines of code that will reset the system for me. There. I'm going to copy all of that. Let's come right down here. Double click on, on the result where my result will be. So scroll li right up and get rid of every single component in here. There. And let's start to work with the reset now. And that will finalize the whole project. As you guys can see, I already have my try cache that will capture or catch any error that I have. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object and this very object is going to be date time there. So the very first one, I'm just going to call that F, this stands for the first one. And now I'm going to enter convert dot today because I want to be able to capture whatever I have inside the date, date time picker. And what do I have inside the date time picker? The very first date time picker dot text. Whatever text I have in there, capture that. There we go. So that's the first object. I'm going to copy this and use it for the second one. Paste. And let's change the name of this to date time picker 2 and this one will be S. There. So now come down here, call time span. So time span, I'm just gonna call, give that object a name, call it maybe DE equals 
s dot subtract so dot subtract that's the function that will officially subtract whatever we have inside the time picker 2 from the time picker 1 subtract that from that that's all enter semicolon so whatever is subtract whatever is subtracted from s is then stored inside the e now so that will be number of this or we can just call it the de or number of days okay we'll just make it de so that we don't confuse dates i will change it to number of days yeah number of days yeah number of days that's fine so you subtract date of birth from the current date that will give you how many days okay number of days that's fine let's come down here now so as for the number of days i'm going to go for lbl days dot text equals we have to convert it to text because whatever that goes inside the label must be in a text format else there will be an error dot to string and what am i converting to string i've just converted i'm going to convert whatever i have inside number of days to string so if i enter number of days in there let's see what's going to happen if it doesn't work then we have to really convert that as well there so let me run it and see what's going to happen now run there so date of birth let's assume the date of birth is that and click on that okay look at that it gave me the number of days with time but i don't want that i want it to convert it straight just to numbers so i'm going to come back in here right in here and we enter convert to string uh, to numbers so in there might as well just enter convert dot to numbers to int integer int 32 right okay then let's enter in 32 and just let's put it in a bracket there okay that is it so convert everything that is converted to integer to string so let's run it again and see what's going to happen this time around because i don't want those numbers in there so let's just say there run okay it's telling me there's an error somewhere okay now let's see back into my codes okay guys back in the codes that should officially be number of days dot days there we go dot days all right so let's run it again that days should have been there be careful you make sure you enter dot days okay run now let's change this date of birth to maybe that and let's verify it there we go look at that okay so that's fine that's working now the next thing we want to do now is we need to take care of uh, let's take care of maybe the months let's see what's next so let's take care of the months if we take care of the months then and the age we can take care of months and age together okay i'm just gonna come right down here let's take care of i'm gonna say int age equals we'll convert that as well convert dot to dot to string that would be to int 32 to int 32 right um what 
am I converting to in 32? I'm converting whatever I have in here. Uh, let's put that in a bracket. And what I've converted into in 32, and I want to enter that into LBL age dot text. I'm going to copy all of these and paste it right in here. And I'm converting age now to be able to get the age, we have to then divide that by 365. We'll divide by six five there we go so let's run and see let me find out how old he is so let's enter maybe is 1960 there we go yeah he's 60 years old very good exit exit works now back in here let's take care of the months i'm gonna copy all of this enter for the months and let's change the details of these to LBL months and the variable will become months and what we are converting here will become that should be age yeah age we need to multiply that so we can even get rid of all of these and just take care of months in one go so get rid of that okay that will be multiplied by 12. multiply that by 12 and that will give us the months how many months spends so these three can be together that's fine now we need to take care of weeks in the case of weeks we have to we have we're gonna have to divide by seven okay in the case of weeks we can let's do it this way I'm gonna copy copy this grab that come right down here paste and I'll change this to weeks right number of days is stored in weeks so we can now come down and say ldl weeks and we grab all of these grab a hold of all of these paste it in there and this will become weeks divided by seven Okay, we have months, we have age, we have weeks. Now let's go for hours. So I want to grab a hold of this and just change things around. Copy, paste, and I'll change this to hours. There we go. This will become hours as well. And this will be hours. Okay, now for hours. So whatever we have inside number of days, we're gonna multiply that by 24 to get hours. Multiply by 24. Yeah. Total days that is stored in here, multiply that by 24. That will give us hours. So we now need to work out minutes. Copy this, come right down here. Is that in here? Let's change this to minutes. Okay, we have minutes there. I'm gonna grab all of this and let's paste it here. Minutes was going to be multiplied that by 60. And we need to change this to minutes as well. So whatever we have in here in hours, so it's hours that we need here. So we'll grab this and 
underscore CDA. Okay. Right. Okay. LBL hours stored in minutes. And that minute is then multiplied by 60. So we need to do exactly the same thing for seconds. So come right down here, this and change all of these to seconds. There we go. And grab that. I think this is called seconds as well. We have seconds. And this will be seconds. And in here, there will be minutes in there. LBL minute. Yep. There. And that's all there is to it, I believe. Yep. Yeah, there we go. So, minute multiplied by 60 will give us how many seconds? There is it. Yeah. Okay, right here, since we finished with the lines of code, we then need to add the details straight in onto my data grid view so there i'm going to say data grid view one dot rows dot add and what am i adding i'm adding the following txt that will be first name dot text dot text enter a comma then we need to add the next one which is txt second name surname dot text then we need to add comma date time date time people dot text that's the very first one comma date time picker two dot text I'm going to enter a comma and the next one is going to be LBL let's say LBL days dot text so I'm going to have to speed that up guys I believe you all get the whole idea now so let's speed that up There, guys so those are the lines of code let's take it from the top of the results bring it down yep and there so I'm now going to run it now run waiting for it to come up enter a name there so we enter Tony Montana and enter date of birth. Uh, let's change the months November, whatever, and click on results. There we go. You see that, guys? So we can enter another person. Let's enter another name and let's say that is Grace. And the sole name is Grace Johnson. Date of birth of Ms. Johnson. Okay, let's change the months to something else. All right, that's fine. March maybe 14. There we go. Check that out. There. And with that, guys, I'm gonna call it the end of this tutorial. I suppose you guys enjoyed. And please do subscribe to my channel, and you can also join to be a member of the channel. Bye for now.